This conference will now be recorded. What's amazing is uh, that that evening I went back to look at the scriptures some more and found uh, even more nuggets from the Lord in that. It's, it's just amazing how God, um, even in the little things, uh, sometimes it's the little things that have the most significance. We can see power, strength, even in an ant. Uh, Carrying a load much bigger than himself, but determination. Um, and so it's two eyes that we can, uh, two ways we can look at uh, the things that's happening around us. We can look uh, through the lenses of the natural, the flesh, or we can see it the way God sees it. And when we see it the way God sees it, then we can really see the power and the glory being manifested in those things, uh, which is uh, why I'm sure this is where God wants me to, to be as far as teaching now, our next study and uh, uh, Bible study. And so in, in studying this, I'm just talking to, uh, to Mike another minute or so. Um, uh, in the study, uh, I realized there's so many uh, uh, characteristic qualities or natures that we see from God. Now, keep in mind, we're talking about the Godhead, God the Father. Um, so when we talk about the Godhead, uh, it doesn't separate uh, the Son and the Spirit of God. So you don't get twisted up or, or bunched up and say, well, he ain't say nothing about Jesus. Well, you know, Jesus is God. And so uh, we're talking about God the Father, the Godhead. And in studying that, um, I realized is, uh, well, what we're going to try to hit and go over is at least 20 excellencies which pertain to the Godhead as God. Um, and so we're going to be looking at that. And the more I started uh, uh, just putting it together, um, it's another year or so that I think we're going to be on this, this topic. Um, they call it theology proper in seminary. Uh, but we're going to be on this topic for uh, a while because we're going to look at at least 20 excellencies of God, at least 20 of them, um, at least 20 of them. And the, the reason being, uh, I was talking to uh, Reverend Allen and, and uh, uh, Reverend Greenlee on Sunday uh, before service, and I was talking about the, the Bible study. And so I, what I was sharing with them is uh, how uh, believers are looking for God to do something that is not of his nature. Um, because when you don't know him, you will you will require or acquire things from him that is not of his nature. Come um, on, Pastor. Case in point, um, I told Greenlee, I said, now you are a man, and here I am praying for you to have a baby for me. And I said, it's impossible. And it doesn't matter if I attach in the name of Jesus in the beginning, if it doesn't matter if I rub oil at the end, it doesn't matter if I go three times around or shout the walls of Jericho coming down, it's against your nature to be able to have a child. Are y'all with me here? Now, you can say, well, Pastor, some of them having, uh, uh, men having babies now. Well, that's not the nature of a man. Now, that's when you're starting to um, adjust and modify the nature. So what people start doing is they start speaking for God or talking like God, modifying who God is. Ah, wow, well, I, 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 can, I can preach that right now. Um, and so uh, here you are looking for a man to have a baby. I'm just using this as an example. And it's against his nature. It's impossible for him to do that because it's against his nature. So when we look at uh, the things of God, uh, here we are not knowing or trying to modify who God is. And the reason why we're not seeing the results that we're looking for is because one, many don't know who God is. They talk about him, they don't know who he is. Two, they're asking something against his nature. I think I said this, on Sunday. That's why you can't sit God on me. That's against his nature to work for you. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you can point your fingers all you want, and uh. I don't care.
how many chicken feet you shake, how <laughs> many beads you have around your wrist. God does not work for you. We work for God. And so when we ask according, the Bible says, according to his will, according to who he, he is, then we can look for those things. Amen. 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 That's, that's probably why God, you see, he, he, never, he never promised me a big house. That's not something he promised. He did promise that he will be my provider. Are y'all with me here? Now, if I try to modify what he says and who he is, I'll get frustrated because I'm trying to make God my God or out of the God I'm looking for and not serving him as the God of who he is. Oh, we're going to have some good, a good time with this. I, I can see that now. You thought Proverbs or something. I think we're going to really get down to this. So let's uh, um, get started here. Um, uh, before I turn it over to our duty, uh, Deacon, um, wherever you are, let's put our hands together and just open up our Bible study tonight. We're blessing the Lord. Amen. Let's just bless him. I mean, really bless the Lord. I mean, really thank him that we are not in a shelter having Bible study, that we're not in a bomb shelter. We're not in some rec center with a bottle of water and a sandwich. Uh, we're not somewhere with candles or being lit. Uh, we're not hovering around in one room. We're not tight in some place. We don't hear bombs over our head. Uh, we're not hey. away from our children. We need to give God praise. Hallelujah. Uh, of who he is for you and for me. We're praying for those who are going through, but right now this praise comes from me because of God and what he has done for me. Now, I can't praise him uh, for you. I can't shout for you. I, I can't lift your hands up, but I can lift my hands up and say, Lord, I thank you because I see what's going on around me, but I also see what you're doing to me and for me. In the midst of all this, he is keeping me. People are losing their minds over rumors of wars, people are losing their minds, even watching what's going on, but yet, he allowed you and I to keep our mind. Uh, amen. And so our job is to keep it stayed on him, is to keep our mind stayed on him so he can keep us in, in perfect peace. When you understand the nature and character of God, it doesn't matter what happens. One thing you know, God will take care of me. Now, you got to know the nature of God. You got to know who God is because you can't say that if you don't know who he is. Uh, but if you know who he is, you know for a fact that God will take care of me. I am a child of God. He will take care of me. Amen. He will take care of me. Even if he had to break my bones for me to straighten up, but he will take care of me. David said, purge me with hyssop. Purge me with hyssop. Do what you have to do, but don't ever take your spirit away, away from me. So we thank God for all he has done this evening. Amen. Uh, let's open up with uh, one or two testimonies. Is there anyone here who has uh, a testimony to the glory of the Lord, a testimony this evening? Good evening, Pastor and First, First Lady and to my church family. Ooh, um, I'm so thankful to be on, be able to get on and uh, let you know uh, that God is still on the throne. He's the healer and deliverer. I uh, was telling Pastor, my legs had uh, swollen up and cramped so badly. I couldn't move. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything. And so, um, well, I happened to tune into HTWBC and heard about snake bites. So Carla and I started, she started running around the, the, the <laughs> from the kitchen back to the bedroom. <laughs> And we began to pull off snake bites. We started pulling them snakes off of us. Amen. And we said, the devil is a liar. So I'm feeling much better. I thank the Lord for it. So I should be in, um, in my house, my church house, my family house on Sunday, praising God. Because um, the enemy might try, but he didn't, he didn't succeed. And so I'm so thankful for the word, Pastor. Keep giving it in season and out of season. 
And people put your armor on because you're going to need it. We try to do this life without using the weapons that Pastor and uh, 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 Reverend Greenlee and uh, um, and Alan have been preaching to us about and those that are teaching. And we can't do it without God. I mean, he's given us the provision. So I just thank you. Uh, that snake bite, I tell you the truth, it came right in on time because I had to pray that stuff off of me. My legs, I couldn't move them. So, but the devil is a liar. So I'm going to get my dance on on Sunday. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 It's a blessing to see uh, what you're dealing with uh, is an opportunity. Um, when the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, it's an opportunity to seize because God wants to get the glory and he wants to listen. He wants to awe us about who he is. So we seize the opportunity. Um, now, here's the thing. Um, the dry bones could have had something on them and they could have been moving a little, but the Lord took them to a place of dry bones so that he can awe. Does anybody remember that passage, Ezekiel? Can these bones live again? No, Lord, uh, uh, only you know that. Well, I'm getting ready to all you in this situation. So when we find ourselves having to go through the trials or the tests in life, uh, we have to see them as opportunities to seize. That's, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He helps us seize those opportunities so that God can reveal himself um, in those situations. And so we thank God um, for, uh, for what he's doing uh, with Sister Kenny and Sister Carla's household and his healing. Amen. Can we get one more? One more uh, testimony. One more testimony. Good evening, family. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, I really uh, thank God for what he's doing in my life, and uh, both in season and out of season. You know, I give God all the glory. I thank God for my family. Thank God for He, the World Bible Church. And uh, I really thank God because we are still in the land of the living. Many people, you know, couldn't make it to this time. Some went to bed with us and they, they couldn't make it. But I really thank God we can't take that for granted. You know, we have something to eat. We have roof over our, our head. Some are in the shelter. You know, some are going through a whole lot today. Some don't even know what to eat. Some are on the street, you know, begging. But you look at them, you are not even more righteous than them. But you are, you know, God, you know, you receive God's grace, you know, to be where you are today. And the mostly I thank God because I received my booster today. And uh, I just wake up from sleep and uh, I'm feeling good and uh, my arms, everything is good. And uh, I'm still with uh, my right mind. <laughs> so I just give God glory still here. You know, and the Bible studies is something to give God the glory. I thank God for everything. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. 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 We thank the Lord for that. Um, and uh, for uh, Deacon Ogbo's testimony. And Deacon, just keep in mind, even if you feel something, don't contribute to nothing negative. Give God the glory. doesn't matter what it is. Amen. Uh, because God did not give us the spirit of fear. But he did give us something that was power, love, and a sound, and a sound mind. Amen. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to our duty deacon or deaconess. I'm not sure. Uh, we start a new month as deacon. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to turn it over to our duty deacon. Good, e good evening, everyone. Such a beautiful Wednesday. Breaking up a little bit deep. Tonight's reading will come from Psalm 121. Good evening, everyone. Tonight's reading will come from Psalm 121. Okay. When everyone has it, give me a thumbs up, a wave, a beautiful smile. 121, and it reads, I will lift up my eyes unto, unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. 
The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in for this time forth and forevermore. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you, we honor you, we praise you, we glorify you, and we thank you for another day. Not just another day, but another Wednesday of Bible study to be able to take in your word, to be able to let it permeate our soul, to be able to our spiritual heart and our spiritual ears to make us the better person that we all need to be, to be able to be more like you, to be an example of you so that all who see us will see you, Father. Father, we just look so forward to this new class, this in-depth study of the nature and the character, character of God. Something more to just to be able to fill our toolbox, <clears throat> to fill our, tool, our spiritual toolbox to make us just that much more stronger. Father, we just thank you for pastor and all the time that he puts forth in his studies to bring it, that you bestow upon him all the wisdom to bring towards us, to bring to us, Father. Father, we love you, we honor you, we praise you, we thank you for your unlimited grace and your unlimited we just love you, we honor you, we praise you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 You can hear me now. Okay. Yes. Uh, we are moving into uh, an era um, where spiritual warfare is being more evident now in the eyes of the believer. Um, the the attacks on the the believers, the church. Um, you can see prophecy being fulfilled uh, to where um, people will stand up for allegiance and talk about um, their favorite basketball football player. Uh, but the men and women of God are being talked now, amen, and uh, there's no uh, commitment and loyalty uh, to the God that we serve in Christ Jesus. And so we have to keep that in mind. Um, talking to uh, a pastor friend of mine uh, earlier today um, and just kind of just finding out how he was doing and um, and some of the other pastors and and just in the talk and conversation, hearing how um, the churches are being attacked, amen. And so this is not when, uh, you, you know, you don't practice um, putting on your armor and then, and, and Deacon Neville's and those have been in the service, you know this, you don't practice putting your armor on and as soon as they say, okay, it's time to go to war, you drop everything you had on and you start running. Uh, that's not what you're supposed to do. The reason why, if I'm, I haven't been in the service, but I have an idea, the reason why you go through boot camp is so that your mind can be renewed. You need to know why you are here. You're here to fight in case of a war. Uh, you're not here just to travel. You're not here just to get cheap stereo sets and, and radio equipment uh, and, and, and all that, but you're here uh, to fight for your country, if so be. And so we have to keep in mind that we are children of God. We are in the army of the Lord. Um, and so we have to fight the spiritual warfare. Um, the enemy wants you to fight natural, uh, but you and I have the insight to know that we're not fighting against flesh and blood, uh, but it's those wickedness, the principalities, those rulers of the dark uh, areas. Um, uh, we know that it's the enemy um, that's trying to uh, persecute the church. Amen, to persecute the church. And we have to know that, amen. Okay, I just want to wake everybody up. It's good to see you, Sister Esther. Good to see you back, Reverend Greenlee. Good to see you uh, on. I'm asked before we move on, keep Reverend Allen and Allen's in, in prayer. He lost his stepfather. Um, uh, he was going up there to uh, see him. Uh, he was he was uh, sickly, 
And then an hour before he got there, he passed away. And so I talked to him on the way up. And so um, I'm asking and soliciting your prayers for him and his family as he have to go through um, uh, that, that season of preparation, amen, to uh, lay his stepfather to rest. Okay, uh, we are looking at the, the nature and character of God. And for those who are just um, tuning in, uh, I was saying earlier that we're going to look at least 20 excellencies uh, which pertain to God, the Godhead of God. Uh, at least 20, we want to just kind of break down. And so tonight is more of an introductory, uh, uh, introduction to uh, what we're going to be looking at and discussing for the next Wednesdays to come. And so um, I know for a fact, when we go on our summer break, we will still be on this. I already know that for a fact. And then we come back, you're going to still see this. Um, I know that for a fact because uh, we, and you found this out and learned this, there's no need us rushing through nothing um, because I need to know this. Uh, I, I need to know this for my life so I can grow in him so I can stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. Here's a quote. Um, and, and every now and then I may put a quote up. Try not to expect quote every Wednesday like you did with Proverbs. Uh, but if I come across a quote, a quote in my study, I will put that quote up. Um, but here's a quote. I couldn't find the, the, the author of the quote, but this is what it said. It says, God is identical with his attributes so that it may be said that he is the knowledge, the knower, and the known. He's identical with his attributes. So he is the knowledge, the knower and the known there's nothing outside of god like there's nothing outside of god everything is inside god but there's nothing outside of god and so the next week is just going to blow us away um when we begin to discuss in detail uh, uh the the attributes of god um and my prayer is that that your you put on your spiritual thinking cap just to uh, to just have the under spirit give you an understanding of what has happened and the God that we serve. Um, it's, it's amazing uh, when uh, a superstar comes around and you see somebody, let's just pick a superstar. Let's, let's say somebody's real famous um, that everyone, okay, well, right now is Barack. We'll just say Barack Obama or Michelle Obama. Uh, j just imagine if uh, she came to your office and you were just sitting there and you wasn't moving. They saying Barack Obama and Michelle Obama's in the office and you're not moving. Uh, they would think something strange of you. Don't you know who this is? <laughs> you're not even getting up to say hello or introduce yourself. Do you not know who this is that's in the office? This is how we should look and see one another when we're talking about the Lord. Do you not know who we're talking about? Because if you knew, your response would be different than one who don't know. So one who don't know who Barack Obama or Michelle Obama is wouldn't move. But one who do know, not just out of respect as the former president, but just someone that's popular and everyone know, you will get up and you will make yourself known. Are y'all with me? Okay, so this is very important. So the reason why we, we want to, to get an understanding is so that we can properly respond. I'm not just responding because the church, uh, the praise team said, get up, let's give the Lord a hand praise. You should give God glory because of who he is. And if you don't feel that, then, then you're not gonna move properly. You move properly because you understand who he is. Okay, let's let's get into this. I have one question um, to start out, just to kind of break some some ice. Um, uh, and don't expect questions every Wednesday either. All right, so I'm just you know got to do things a little different here. All right, so here, here's the question for tonight: Knowing that God sees and knows all we do, 
should that knowledge make us afraid or competent or both? Pastor, I had a comment on the um, the quote that you shared. Okay. Um, when you were describing that quote, it made me think about David when he showed up at the battle. Yep. And everyone was cowering about because of this Philistine. And David's question was, who, first of all, is this uncircumcised Philistine? Does he not know about our God? Yes. Yes. And that's the mindset that your your comments in your opening reminded me of. You know, it's almost like, okay, yes, I've got this problem, but does this problem know about my God? Amen. Amen. Good point, uh, Reverend Greeny. Good, good point. Um, and this is this is my this has been my prayer in the in the preparation of the study, that we really, really get the understanding of who we are so that it will um, bring life to the rest of our days. Saints, you can't, listen, 10 o'clock a.m. is gone. It's gone, okay? It, it's gone. You can talk about it. You can journal it. You can do it, but it's gone. You ain't gonna never see 10 o'clock a.m. this day on this March ever again. And so we wanna make sure the rest of our days are alive in him. So that at the end of our days, we can say that I am still pressing towards the mark and be excited like Paul, not ashamed of what he has done. But now at the end of his days, saying I fought a good fight. How, how many people, you know, some people haven't said that because some really haven't touched what they were supposed to touch in the Lord. Some haven't even lived out what they were supposed to live out in the Lord. Some, some haven't even found their purpose until later in life. We want to get an understanding of who God is so that we can say at the end of our days, I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. So here's the question. So knowing that God sees and knows all we do, should that knowledge make us afraid or comforted, or both? Yeah, that is, um, uh, I would say both, because um, God is the beginning and the end of our lives. He sees everything, and uh, I should be afraid. When I'm doing something that is out of his commandments, uh, I should be afraid because he is seeing me. No matter whatever I'm doing, wherever I am, he is seeing me, so I should be afraid when I'm doing the wrong thing, then at the same time, when I'm going through trials, when I'm going, when I'm in danger, I should be comforted because he says that I shall, I will not leave you nor forsake you. So, and in knowing that he is there with me, I should be comforted because I know that I'm saved. Amen. Amen. And I, I think, um, good point, uh, a good answer, uh, and I think uh, saints, the reason why there is not a full percentage or 100% of our response to God the way it should be is because of a lack of knowledge. And you know, we talked about that in the book of Proverbs. It's a lack of knowledge. W one of the excellencies that we're going to uh, point, uh, I made sure that we will see and, and read and understand in detail is the wrath of God. Because when you begin to understand the curses and the wrath of God, the, see, not just the love of God, but also the wrath of God, it will balance your life and it will have you not thinking that God owes you anything and he should accept whatever you give him. All right, let's put that aside. Let's, 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 let, me, let me just be, say this before we move on. Uh, God is not like your BFF. Okay. All right. So so uh, he ain't your buddy. He ain't your pal. OK, he is God almighty. OK, now and don't mix the friend of God with one of your friends. Uh, are y'all with me here? All right. Just just everybody just every now and then just nod your head. Let me know. Uh, we, we cool. OK. All right. So so let me see if anybody else want to add to that or respond to this question. Should we be afraid or confident or should we be both? Dignus Barnes, 
you you mute it. Okay. Okay. Can you all hear me now? Yes. Okay. I think the answer is also both. And afraid in the sense of reverence to God. I think we um, fear God in reverence. Way. Because of who he is. And we know that he's, you know, all powerful and all knowing and all seeing in every way at the same time. So definitely uh, afraid in a reverent way, but also comforted to know that um, because I know his word, I believe his word, I stand on his word, I live his word, I read his word, I breathe his word, and I believe it. I actually believe what God says in his word. So yes, I, I know we should be comforted as well. Okay, okay, good answer, good answer. Uh, First Lady, I think I saw you. Uh... Well, my answer was uh, along the lines of what Deaconess Barnes shared. Um, I think it should make us uh, feel both. Uh, and again, it was like Deaconess Barnes shared the reverence, um, just knowing because of we know who God is, that when we do something wrong, we should have that respect and reverence for him that we want to please him and we don't want to do anything against his will. And then I also thought that um, it should make us feel comforted because in spite of all that he knew that I would do, um, the wrong, the good, the bad, the ugly, I can still have that comfort in knowing that he loves me and that he is faithful and forgiving. So I would say knowing that he sees all that we do um, we should be afraid that reverent fear and comfort it because even when he knew before we were born all that we would do, his word tells us that he still loves us. He's still um, faithful and just to forgive us. Amen. Amen. And 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 here's uh, what we have to watch out, uh, saints, is is our take on what we think God is like instead of allowing him to reveal to us who he is you see so a lot of times we are we are praying and acting based on our definition of who god is see he done got from being almighty now to the man upstairs see and we keep lowering it keep lowering it where now we can control all right um uh one, one uh uh I was reading this article and one pastor wrote a book and said, I'm going to show you how to get to heaven and unlock the blessings of God. Now, how are you going to do that? Are you with me here? So when you don't understand the nature uh, and the character of God, you begin to define him your way and you begin to weaken in your eyes who he is. It's with a comfort and being afraid, reverencing him for who he is. I mean, do you not know, listen, do you not know right now God can stop your breathing? Did, did you not realize that? You, I know you're breathing now because you're breathing on the grace of God, but do you realize even right now he can stop you whenever he wants to, and you have nothing that you can do about it. Do you, do you know that? Do you know that? Uh, and so in that, he's revealing to us that he's a God of grace. Are you with me here? All right, that he's a God of grace. So this is why we reverence him. This is why we give God praise is because he just revealed to us who he is, which is one of his excellencies. Uh, and so this is why uh, it's important for us to know these things um, uh, so that we can live the life that's fulfilling, but the life that's pleasing to him. All right. Let's, let's, let's look at something here. Yeah, Daddy, um, oh. well, thank you so much for touching this. You know, before, right, I, I, be, I became, you know, strong in the Lord. And I used to be afraid when I'm about to go to bed to sleep. I'm always skeptic, thinking about who knows if I can make it the next day, understanding too many people dying left and right. Who knows when is it going to be my own turn? It put me in fear. But the time I realized that everything is in his hand and the understanding that what I'm struggling then is the things I'm not doing right. 
is it making me uncomfortable because I don't know where I will be if the death comes. But by the time I realize that I supposed to stay focused more on the life I'm living than focusing on if I'm dying or not. So by the time I stay focused more on the life I'm living, I find out that going to sleep, I have the confidence it doesn't matter if I'm waking up or if I'm not waking up. My concern is where I'm going after this world. Amen. Amen. It's, it's, imp it's important, saints. It's important because you remember the Bible says, Paul said this in Corinthians. He said, um, Satan, who's the God of this world, has blinded the minds of them who don't believe. He has blinded the minds. And so everyone can, in their own way, uh, philosophers and, and, and scientists, which science is part of, part of God, but scientists are trying to move God out of it. But here's the thing, everyone is trying to rule God out. Everyone knows what God is like. Everybody knows what God's gonna do. Everybody knows the next step, but no one can stop death. Everyone knows exactly how God is. They know how to move them. They know how to make God do this and make God do that. But no one know how to make God stop them from dying. God is, listen, outside. There's nothing outside of him. We are inside. There's nothing outside of God. That's why his ways are far past finding out because God can do this one way and this another way and it can end up the same way. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. All right, let's look at something here. Meaningful, meaningful and value relationships are based on knowledge. When you meet someone for the first time, when you meet them for the first time, you don't consider that you know that person until you have the opportunity to learn more about the person. You wanna learn more about their history, their personality, their likes, their dislikes, their, delight, their desires, because meeting someone the first time you don't really know them until you get to know them, all right? And so uh, valuable relationships are based on knowledge. What, what makes, uh, uh, right now I'll, I'll, I'll use uh, the Barnes and the Nevels and the Brinsons, what makes the marriage uh, valuable is because you all know each other and getting to know each other. And you'll say, I didn't know that last year, but I know that this year. You'll find new things. And that's why in marriages, you constantly pursuing to know more, which makes the marriage valuable. If it's not valuable, anybody can buy it from you. Did y'all get that married couple? Anybody can come in. If it's not, if it doesn't have any value to it, anybody can come in and buy it from you. The reason why you, you get to know each other so that you can make the relationship viable, all right? And to make one me a relationship meaningful is all based on knowledge. Okay, here it is, uh, Deacon Barnes, uh, Deacon Barnes, if I can use you all for an example. I can come in and say, uh, Sister Shell like apples. Deacon Barnes will start laughing. <laughs> you think. She don't like apples, she like pineapples because he has knowledge of her. And here I am coming in and acting as if I know her, but I don't know her because I have no knowledge of her. So I'm gonna keep missing in my things because there's no knowledge. Are y'all with me here? What makes it valuable is, of, is from the knowledge you have of the individual, all right? So that's why when you meet somebody, you don't consider that you know that person until, until you know history about them, until you know the personality, until you know the likes, until you know the dislikes, until you know the desires, then you can say, I know that individual. Okay, Dick and Nevels, what's one thing you know about Makar? 
I know that she loves to take a good nap. <laughs> okay. See that? Now we can all look at Deacon is my car and say that. No, I don't believe that. I can't see that. I cannot see that. But the reason why you can say that is because you know her. Are you with me here? You know her. And so there, there must be, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stress this because as we move on, you're going to get a full understanding of what I'm saying. When there's knowledge of, it keeps you on point in how you respond, act, or your request from the individual because you have knowledge of who you're talking to or who you're involved with. So you can't meet me for the first time and say, you know me. You lying to yourself. And you can't tell everybody else you know me and you never talk to me. You still lying to yourself. And you can think you know me by way of someone else, but you don't really know me personally until you come talk to me. There's a lot of people in church know of God, but don't know him. And they've heard people talk about him. And many times they're just echoing. This is why uh, church folk are in trouble right now, because they echoing what they hear. And it's not based on what they know about God. Are y'all with me? Somebody say amen. All right. Okay. The more we get Amen. to know, Amen. more we get to know about a new acquaintance, we have a better understanding of how to carry on a relationship with that person. The more we know about the new acquaintance, the better understanding we have. This is why when one is saved, immediately you need to be disciple to know about the new acquaintance, the new relationship you're embarking in. You can't just say, you know, Bible says you confess out of your mouth, Lord Jesus, which is the truth, thou shalt be saved. Okay, all right. Now, uh, unbelievers' response should be to you, now what? And who are we talking about? And what is he gonna do for me? And what can I do for him? Is he bad? Is he good? Is he gonna make a way? Is he going to lead me in the way that I am? Is he going to hurt me? See, these are things that they need to know. And if you don't know these things, then you'll start to self-counsel and you'll start to now serve him the way you think. The reason why many are missing in prayer and even their requests. If the Bible says, saints, be anxious for nothing, but in all things give thanks, for this is the will of the Lord, then if you've been anxious, you're going against his nature. Are y'all seeing this? Yeah, I just, I don't know what God's going to do. And I've been praying and asking God, well, you're anxious. And he said, that's not my nature. And you can get a better response from him if you give him thanks because he said, this is my nature. For one who is anxious don't really know who I am because you ain't anxious towards someone you know who's in control. You're only anxious when you don't think they can handle what you're dealing with. So the Lord is saying, if you know me, be anxious for nothing. But in all things, in prayer and supplication, make your request known. Give thanks. He's saying, if you know me, you'll know what to do. If you don't know me, you're going to respond in an anxious manner. Am I helping anybody? Hey, that, 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 you are too much for me. <laughs> um, you just got me right here. You know, and um, uh, when you don't uh, have the understanding, like you use marriage, as an example, right? And when I married, I was given to my wife as a bride and not a wife, but a bride. And they call me bridegroom. Amen. Now, in other words, when you look at the meaning of groom, you find out that you're the one that groomed her into a wife. 
right. then they will expect you to take time to learn he, her, know actually who she is. Then now that will help you to mold her, you know, to who you want her to be. Amen. But if you spend a lot of time outside her life, not spending more time with her, you will never know her. And right. at the end of the day in life, she will remain a bride to you and not a wife until you learn the time you should learn her very well, then and groom her into a wife. Amen. Amen. Having that knowledge, um, it, it strengthens the relationship. I remember in high school uh, around, I think it was like no, uh, seventh grade. Um, uh, some great, uh, uh, and, and here it is, Reverend Greenlee. Uh, I was going out with this little girl, and so and, and all her little friend girlfriends were getting little things from these guys and all that. And she looked at me and she said, You don't never give me nothing. I said, Well, first of all, I don't know how to be a boyfriend. I mean, you put that title on me, I need to first get an understanding what it is to be a boyfriend. So you can't require something on me that I don't know. This is the reason why you have to get knowledge so that you will be walking rightly if not someone can be looking something from you and will never get it because you have no knowledge of who it is or what it is are y'all with me here okay in the same manner we must recognize that a vibrant relationship with god must be rooted in a firm understanding of who he reveals himself to be in his word you suppose, I suppose to be able to say one thing I know about God. Okay, here it is. Uh, here it is. Um, okay, let me pick on somebody. Uh, 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 Deaconess Brinson, uh, what's one thing you know about God? I know that he loves me unconditionally, no matter what I do. Amen. Because he revealed that in his word about him. Another thing we know about God is he cannot lie. And I didn't hear that from the news. I didn't read that off somebody else's book. Uh, I didn't hear that on the street. Uh, he revealed and showed that he is a God who cannot lie. All right. So now for us to have this vibrant relationship with God, it must be rooted in this firm understanding of who he is. Now, you got people faking it like they live in their best life. But Ecclesiastes told us in the wisdom of Solomon that God has put eternity in every man. Every man is looking for God, whether they find him, submit to him or not. But it's in it's a void in every man that's born into this world and every woman that's born into this world. There is a void. Now you can you can dress it up and mask it with the things of this world, but privately, secretly, in your own quiet time, you will reveal if you don't know God that there is a void still in your life. Because in order for us to have a vibrant relationship with God, it must be rooted with a firm understanding of who He is. We are so quick to want to get out of Bible study, so quick to want to get out of church. But how are you going to know who he is? And you can't keep reading chicken, new, chicken soup devotions and, and two-minute devotions and drive-by devotions. You need to get a deep understanding of who he is because, can I tell you something? The attacks are getting deep. Boy, your trials are getting deeper. And you need somebody who's under those trials, someone who's outside of the attacks that or the test that you have to deal with and if you don't have a firm understanding you're going to fall short to the wiles of the enemy satan will trick you into something that don't make no sense and that's because you have no firm understanding of who god is and then you'll be saying out your mouth you'll be lying out your mouth on god that's because you have no understanding of who he is oh pastor if you ain't clear them out with Proverbs, you're going to clear them out on this one. Okay. So, Charlene, I see you unmuted. You you, you, you got a uh, question, comment? Sorry, Pastor, of a mistake. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, many believers 
misunderstand God in their lives because they do not understand his nature. To have a confident relationship with the Lord, we must know his nature and his character so that you can have a confident relationship. Listen, saints, there are saints and believers right now that's been in church for years and you can still ask them, do they know if they're going to heaven or not? And they still at the crossroad. I talk to saints, both young and old, and I will hear them say, I just want to make it to heaven. And I'm saying, well, then you 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 don't know scripture. You don't know God. You don't understand what Christ did. You don't understand the work. If, if you still saying that after 20 and 30 years of, quote unquote, being in the Lord, then you don't know. And there's no confidence in your relationship with him. So we have to know his character and his nature. Any comments or you just want me to keep firing? I have a comment, Go Pastor. Um, as you're teaching, it's making me think about the word where God said Adam knew his wife, and so he got intimate with her. And so when I think about the word intimacy, it always makes me think of intimacy and see. And so, like you said, in order to get to know God, we literally have to get into God and see. Spend time, spend time in his word and prayer, trusting, believing, and knowing that his word is the truth and he's not going to stay us wrong. So, you know, that intimate piece is so, so very important. We can't have no little warmed over Christian walk. We can't, like you said, with this little word. We have to get intimate with God. Amen. We, we, you, now, you, you, what you want to see, saints, is that how this ties into Proverbs, how Proverbs ties in Revelation, because it's all the word of God. We want to understand and see the wonders of God so God that can be, reveal those things to us about him so that it can build a more confident um, uh, stance in us based on what we know about who God is. And, and, I, and I can't just have you keep telling me. You can testify. You can co-sign. But I can't go off what you telling me. Because when I'm going through my trial, what you said ain't going to help me. It has to be what I know. How you view God? Keep your mind how you view God and his involvement in your life touches every aspect of who you are. Everything about your life, your desires, your motives, your attitude, your words, and your actions is affected by your awareness of who God is. You can stop and start talking to somebody and you can hear how much aware they are of who God is. You can watch people's motives. You can look at their attitudes. You can see their great desires. You can hear the words come out of their mouth. You can see their actions. And you can see whether or not they are affected by the awareness of who God is. Quickly. They can open their mouth and you know which direction. They're not aware of who God is. They're not aware of who God is. Somebody could just come out their mouth and say, you know, I just want to be rich and I just want to be, you know, I just want to be rich. They don't have no awareness of who God is. You can look at the motives, you can look at the attitudes, you can look at the words. But we have to have an understanding. All right. And if that understanding doesn't help us, if we're not involved in knowing the nature and the character of God, listen, then we are missing. And, 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 and I know uh, in the Lord, the Holy Spirit is going to raise and strengthen your faith after this, this, these lessons. Because it's going to put us where we need to be. There has to be a difference between you, Deacon Nevels, and the unbeliever. It has to be a difference. It has to be a difference, Sister Esther, between you and one who is not saved. 
there's supposed to be a difference between one who is aware and one who's not aware. All attempts end in vain when man tries to know the mind and will of God apart from his word. It's in vain. When you're trying to know the mind and will of God apart from his word, it's in vain. It's in vain. It's in vain. It feels good. It may look like a good direction, but it's in vain. When you're trying to know the will of God outside of his word. I know God going to do this. I know. OK, prove it. Show me. God going to turn around. God, he can't, but then show me. God said he going to move my mind. Just show me. Because your word don't mean nothing. Tell you how powerful God's word is. He said, listen, let me tell you how powerful my word is. God said heaven and earth will pass away. I'm that bad, God said. I'll get rid of heaven and earth and I'll start all over again. And there's nothing you can say about it. Before my word comes back to me, void, heaven and earth will pass away. Now, that says a lot about us. Don't it, Sister Esther? That says a lot about all that power you think you have. That says a lot about all the power that Putin think he has and all the power the U.S. think that. God said, I tell you what, I'll wipe heaven and earth out, but my word that come out my mouth will not come back to me void. Now, that's scary. That's why we understand the nature and character of God and we begin to see the decrees is one of the things we're going to understand of God so that we can line ourselves up to who he is. Ah, oh, Pastor, this, this teach tonight. All right, dig and let's get your Bible ready. So without an accurate knowledge of God and biblical doctrine, we are in danger of allowing unbiblical beliefs to creep in and take us off the right course. When there is no knowledge and no biblical doctrine, you'll start running and spewing out the mouth and think you talking, thus said the Lord, and you're saying, thus says Satan. Uh, are y'all with me here? Yeah, you, you know, uh, you, 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 you remember in, when Jesus was in the wilderness, uh, Satan said his words and then he quoted back God's word to try to get Jesus to turn around without any knowledge of God. Accurate knowledge. It's accurate knowledge. And, uh, and, uh, and, and listen, I charge you as a child of God to make sure people are accurate in their knowledge of God. If not, they're mishandling the word and they're misinterpreting who God is. God ain't say take one step, he'll take two. Then tell them that's not accurate. I understand what you're saying, but don't say God say it. And y'all know I'm a God said preacher. If God said it, I'm going to ask you, are you willing to die with that? Okay, you said God said, are you willing to... You, uh, you, you, are you willing to die with what you just said God said? Show me in the word. All right, Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. Deacon Nevers, you mind reading that for us? No. Uh, Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorious glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. See, don't, don't let that wise man glory. Don't let the man who got power glory. Glory in this, that you know me. Glory in that, that you know me. That you know who I am. Everybody can tell you who you are. People can tell you who you are. They ain't you. They ain't, they ain't you. They ain't you. No, let's find out who God is. Then we can glory. The Bible describes the nature of God as self-existent. The grounds of God's self-existence is in himself. He is uncaused. And remember, this is an introduction because after this, the next hundred of Wednesdays, 
we just gonna be going for it. So God is uncaused and is in fact the ultimate cause of everything. Therefore, there is no other God nor anything else behind him. Furthermore, God has no needs. So nothing is necessary for him. Boy, I done checked all of us right there. I done checked all. He ain't got no needs. He don't need you to praise him. He don't need you to wake up now. He don't need you to give him that little crackly song. He don't need you to give him a half of a singing. He don't need you to give him half of a dance. God don't need, he don't have no needs. So how are you, oh, good God Almighty, how are you going to affect someone who don't have needs? You're going to have to ask him what moves him. He has no needs. So right. nothing is necessary. <laughs> okay. So stop waking up in the morning thinking that the day ain't going to start unless you're in it. Nothing is necessary to God. Okay. Anybody just got a whiff of grace and mercy did anybody just feel that big strong wind of grace and mercy because if nothing is necessary my living here ain't really necessary it ain't really necessary because it ain't like you the only one that can share the gospel it's not like you ain't the only deacon in this world you ain't the only deaconess you ain't the only pastor you ain't the only preacher you ain't the only sheep into a church and so don't think you are necessary Good God Almighty, I just got a wind of grace and mercy that just blew over me. And now I'm seeing how God is revealing his grace and mercy over my life. So he don't need anything. And he is uncaused. Ain't nothing calls God. I know what scientists try to say, but nothing calls God. And all we can do, listen, here, Deacon Nevels, all we can do is make off of what he created my god oh oh boy but if he ain't create the woods they couldn't make the cross the crucifier our savior if he didn't make the iron they couldn't make the nails the nail in his hands are you understanding we can only make off of what god has already created he is uncaused he have no needs so nothing is necessary, nothing's necessary for him. Nothing's necessary for him. The fact that God is eternal, naturally, follows from his self-existence. Okay, give it to me, D. Psalm 102, verse 24b. Oh, go ahead and read 24a. But first, 24 through verse 27. Man, Psalm 102, 24 through 27. I said, oh my God, Take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou challenge, change them, and they shall be, they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. Anybody getting this? His years have no end, but the psalmist just described everything that's going to die off. But he just told us in his word that he is everlasting to everlasting. He is eternal. There's no end to God. Are y'all getting this so far? When Moses, when Moses asked, hold on, let me go back. I want you all to see this. When Moses asked God what name he should give to the Israelites to explain who sent me or who sent Moses to them, God said, tell them I am sent you. I am, in Hebrew is, I will, that will, I shall be. In other words, I will be whatever. Are y'all are getting this? That means, uh, 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 Sister Laverne, you serve a bad God that he just said, tell them whoever and whatever I am. 
You know how bad that is? You, you know how bad somebody got to be to say, who I'm going to tell sent me? And you say, well, that's my big brother. No, he said, whatever, whoever I am, that I am. They want to be a mountain. I am the one who created it. They want to be fire. I am the one who, I am that who I am. Hallelujah. He said, Moses, you go tell Pharaoh, I am, this is the God that we're serving, y'all. This is the God that the enemy flees and afraid of. He says, Moses, you tell Pharaoh, I am sent you. Somebody need to, I'm going to preach that, Reverend Greenlee. I am sent you. Do you know how much backing that is? That means you got all eternity behind you. Yeah, yeah. I am sending you. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. If it's you, then we good. If it was Reverend Greenlee, we may lose. If it's Sister Jasmine, we may lose. But I am sent me. Oh, it's a done deal. Somebody says it's a done deal. It's a done deal. That's the it's backing. That's the backing we have, saints. That's the backing we have in God. Okay. The name I am refers to God's eternal, self-existing, self-sustaining nature. God, unlike us, does not derive his life, existence, or being from anything or anyone outside of himself. In fact, he himself is the source of all being and life. Good God Almighty. This is why we say good God almighty. We ain't saying ain't a cliche. We saying good God almighty. When you think about who he is. Self-existing, self-sustaining. That means if all of us wipe out, God still sustain. Notice he didn't say, wait a minute, I got to keep some people around because I ain't going to be able to sustain if I handle people. He said, I'll wipe out heaven and earth. And I'll keep my word. Psalms 90, verse 2, King James Version. Psalm 90 and 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, wherever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, Deke. Hold on, Deke. I don't think they got that because it was a key thing you said. I don't think, I don't think they got that. Verse 90, verse 90, verse 2. There's one word that starts off this verse. What is it? Before. Good God Almighty. Everybody circle that. Before there were mountains. Before there was an earth. Before yes. all this, thou were everlasting to everlasting. Anybody can define that? Can anybody define everlasting to everlasting? You can't define that. And this is what's important because once we understand, and you say, well, Pastor, this seems like this is basic. No, this ain't basic. I think every year we got to understand the God that we serve so it can keep us on track. Once we get a grasp, I mean, after tonight of the God we serve, we're going to look at the enemy and our situation and say, do you know I am is who I serve? It's the I am. It's the same one to split the sea. Same one to save Daniel in the lion's den. He's the same one who worked it out for the Hebrew boys. I am a child of the I am. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Anybody got any comments? Listen, you know, pastor get excited. So you can jump right in. It's just like double dutch. You just got to wait for opening and just jump right in. All right. Okay, that uh, yeah, you just remind me. Um, uh, I say uh, the God of the mountain, He's still the God of the valley, and That's when right. things go wrong, He make it right. You know, so He's He's everywhere. You know, He's in the dark, He's in the light. You know, He's in the stormy sea, He's in the quiet weather. He's everywhere. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's 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 gonna it's gonna heighten our strength. It's going to make us aware of the deuteronomy's power that was given to us when we start seeing the nature and the character of God. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Go for it. Man, Isaiah 40 and 28 in the ESV. 
Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Have you not heard? I know you're a believer. I know you act like you got it all together, but have you not heard? The God we serve is everlasting. Have you not heard that you're going to leave this earth, but he's still going to be here? John chapter 5, verse 26. John 5 and 26. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Okay, I say it again. God, unlike us, does not derive his life, existence, or being from anything or anyone outside of himself. He don't need you for his life. He is life. Okay, Acts. Chapter 17, verse 24 and 25, D. Acts 17, 24 to 25 in the ESV. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. Oh my goodness. He gives life, breath. He don't need anything. He gives. He don't need anything. He gives. Are y'all seeing that? God don't need anything. It's in him. He gives. Okay. Logically speaking, everything that comes into being must have a cause. However, God never came into existence and therefore does not require a cause. It was no in the beginning, something created God. No. Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, who? God. Never came into existence and therefore does not require a cause. He has always existed. He is not bound or contained by time or space, but transcends both. So I said, for us to treat God like we treat one another or treat God like we treat our friends or call him a BFF like we look at our best friends, we haven't under, haven't don't have an understanding of the character and nature of God. He is not bound or contained by time or space. He transcends both. You think time, you think God said, let me have him do this because I'm time running out of time. You know what God will do? I'll stop time. Didn't he do that? Didn't he do that? Was it Jacob? Made the sun stand still? Yep, he did. D did he make it? Did he make the sun stand still? I'm talking about the God we serve. Did he not make the sun stand still? Did he not stop time? My God. Did he not stop? Because time works for him. Space he created. But he created space, but is there not enough space to hold him? First Kings chapter eight, verse 27. Am I helping anybody so far? Amen. Okay. First Kings amen, chapter eight, amen. verse 27. First Kings 8 and 27. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain, contain thee. Mm. How much less this house that I have built? Man, God said, listen, heaven and earth can't contain. You know, you can shoot a, a arrow in the sky and it probably will keep going forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and, and a million light years later, still probably going. And guess what? Outside of that still stands God. Second Chronicles chapter two, verse six. In Chronicles 2 and 6, but who is able to build him in house, seeing that heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain him? <laughs> who am I then that I should build him a house, save only to burn sacrifice before him? Can I tell you something here, saints? Because the Holy Spirit now dwells in us, the Lord dwells in our temple. But do not think he is just contained 
adhere to the word Bible church. He dwells, the Holy Spirit dwells. He's everywhere. Psalm 90 and 4, ESV. Psalm 90 and 4, ESV. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. Okay, all right. Okay, I, okay, so here it is. Has anybody ever lived a thousand years? Uh, how old was Methuselah? Methuselah was about 900, I think. Okay, no one lived a thousand years. But even if, check this out. Let me tell you how powerful God is. Even if one lived a thousand years, it's only but one day in the eyes of God. Good God Almighty. So, so okay, let's just play with this. Sister Esther. Let's play with this. I'm 54. I'm 54 years old. That means it may be only 54 seconds or tenths of a second in the eyes of God. And I'm worn out, Reverend Greenlee. And that's only 54 tenths of a second probably uh, in the eyes of a God. Or milliseconds or whatever you want to look at it. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. When we begin to see how big God is, and that this is the God that we're serving in Christ Jesus, then we can walk with our heads up high. Because we're back by Almighty. Oh man. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Second Peter 3 and 8. But beloved. Be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. I know some knew that was in the Bible, but not everybody. That's why you need to highlight it. Pastor, that makes me think about how we quote have suffered so much, and we do know that there have been people who have passed during the pandemic. But in God's eyes, that two years, that's a nanosecond. Right. 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 We cry, how long, God? What if the Lord said, okay, um, just say if he, if he said, I'm coming back in four hours. That's 4,000 years. <laughs> Somebody could say, Lord, according to our calculation, that's 4,000 years. Because he's not bound by time and space. All right, let's, let's keep moving. God possesses attributes that we can know even in just in part. And he's given us in his word as a means to understand himself. All God's attributes are inseparably joined. They cannot be divided. God's attributes exist in harmony with each other. All right. You can't divide them. They are in harmony with one another. All right. It's important to see that God is not presented to us as a set of well-organized theological rules unrelated to our everyday life. No, that's not how that is. He has determined to reveal his character in the context of peace and pain, joy and sorrow, grace and wrath, birth and death, love and hate, and other real situations. So listen, God know who he is. It's we that don't know who God is. So God determined within himself how he's going to reveal to us who he is. So he does He does these things through peace, through pain, through joy and sorrow, through grace, through wrath, through birth, through death, love and hate and other situations. Here's an example. We learn about God's law from a murderer named Moses. God revealed who he's a God of law and the laws of God when Moses murdered. God gave the Israelites laws. So within himself, he determined how he's going to reveal his character to us. All right. We learn of God's sovereignty from the suffering or the sufferer named Job. We knew that knew about God's sovereignty by seeing the situation Job was in. That's how we learned about the sovereignty of God. Uh, Y'all get this now? We know he's a provider when the widow only had some meal and a little bit of oil for her and her son. 
we knew he is a God that provides through the way he revealed himself through that situation. We know he's a protector by the way he held Daniel together in the lion's den. So he revealed to us he is a protector. So you can say God is a protector because he revealed himself as a protector. He's a way maker. How you know that? Joseph was in a pit and became a prince in a palace. So I know God is a God that is a way maker because he revealed himself. We learn about the grace of God from, from the rebel named Peter. That's how we learn he's a God of grace. And you can echo that because of your life. See, that's one thing we know because he revealed that. You can't say something he didn't reveal. Are y'all with me here? Just, you know, you hear people now calling it prophet line. People prophet line. Are uh, they prophet line about what God said and what God gonna do? No. Uh, what did he say? See, we got to get to the point where what did God say? Because that's the only thing I can stand on. Now, these are the real down to earth context in which God chose to reveal himself to mankind. So he chose to reveal who he is through these situations. Anybody that lost a loved one? Did he reveal to you that he's a God of comfort? Yes, he's a comforting God. The reason why we can say that is because in our loss, he comfort us so we can say he's a comforting God. Because he revealed that. So we must affirm both that God is infinite or unlimited. Nothing will change God's being. Nothing's going to change his perfection. Nothing's going to change his purpose or promises. We must also affirm that God is personal and that he relates to us personally and counts us valuable. Well, how did you know that, Pastor? Because he sent his only begotten son. So they won't Glory. Care, but have everlasting Hallelujah. life. So he looks at us as valuable because hell was not made for man. Huh. Uh, okay, let's go. Uh, theology is humanity's reasonings and conclusions about God arranged in a systematic and formal way. That's why they call it systematic theology, or in this case, about the character and uh, the nature of God is uh, theology proper. Theology is derived from the Greek word theos, which is God, and logos, which is study or dialogue. Theology uses a disciplined, precisely defined system of logic to come to conclusion, which most theologians regard as undisputable because they seem so logical. Here's some things that's just logical. Anybody know God is in control? That's just that's that's just straight logical. Anybody know he's in control? Anybody know by now nobody can stop him? These are some things that's undisputable. Anybody know that God will do whatever he wants to do? That's undisputable. So theology, when we study these things, we use, we're saying these are uh, uh, disciplined, precise things of God that's logical. <laughs> I know he has a plan. That's just obvious that he has a plan. He may not share it all to you. Don't mean he doesn't have a plan. But one thing we know from the beginning to the end, he has a plan. All right, here's key. Here's a key thing to write down or just to take a picture of. How a person lives their life is a function of how they think. If your mind is constantly feeding on earthly, everyday things, your source of strength and your encouragement will be limited 
to the resources of the natural world. Now, this is what's amazing. Since Kenny God said, I come that you may have life. And you hear, you hear me say this all the time, but we had life. No, you had the natural life. I'm getting ready to show you how to live a supernatural life in a natural world. So that now you won't be fighting against flesh and blood, but you will be calling them demonic spirits out in prayer and taking charge over those things to try to control you, your life, and your family. So how a person lives their life is a function of how they think. Can I, can I tell you something? As much as study I've done, as much as prayer I've done, much as seeking I have done, I'm still a, nano, a nanosecond or whatever uh, Reverend Greeny said of any knowledge of who God is. And I, I, I thought I put a lot of time in. Can I tell you something? It's so much about him, I still want to know. And at the end of our days, you will know enough for your life, but it doesn't mean you knew it all. How a person lives their life is a function of how they think. If your mind is constantly feeding on earthly, everyday things, guess where you're going to get your resources? Guess where you're going to get your strength from? The natural world. That's why people are, some people are moved by the news, the news of others. By word of mouth, they move by those things because they constantly feeding on earthly, everyday things. This is why they go, oh, Lord, did y'all see what happened in the news? Oh, this is going to be bad. This ain't going to look good. Wait a minute, hold on a minute. How you know this ain't going to look good? Now, it may not look good for you, but you ain't going to talk about how it's going to look to me. If you're feeding on earthly, everyday things, your source of strength and your encouragement is going to be limited. But can I tell you something? I don't care what war it is. Today is still a good day. Because I ain't, I'm, not, I'm not feeding just on earthly, everyday things. I'm feeding off and feasting off the word of God. So my strength is not just on the things I see. Some people are falling out. You listen, listen. Let me, I, I got so many examples. This essay don't make no sense. I'm talking to believers. They, they, you know, another variant coming out. You know, it's gonna be. Wait a minute, hold up. Didn't you just say he is a healer? So then, which one are you gonna feed off of? Now, if you're gonna feed off the earthly things, you're gonna give way to the attacks of the enemy through fear, or are you gonna believe the God you serve? Okay, Pastor, just keep talking, keep talking. I only got about two more slides left. When those in the Bible consider the attributes of God, those in the Bible, their meditation, says Laverne, of God's character gave them comfort and assurance. That's why Joshua said, meditate on his word day and night. Meditate, Joshua said this, meditate on the word day and night. Let them meditate on the word day and night. David said, meditate on on the word day and night, and he shall be. If you meditate on the, the word day and night, he shall be. If you meditate on the word day and night, he shall be like. If you meditate on the word day and night, he shall be like a tree. If you meditate on the word day and night, he shall be like a tree planted. If you meditate on the word day and night, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers. If you meditate on the word day and night, he shall be like a tree. That's planted by the waters. That bring it forth good fruit in the season. And his leaves shall also not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. But the ungodly. So if you're meditating on the word day and night, what happens is it gives you comfort and assurance. But if you're meditating on the earthly things and that's all, your assurance is limited. This is why people are waiting for what the news said at night to see how that day is going to be in the morning. Are y'all with me here? And oh my God, did you hear what happened last night? I heard, 
but the God I serve never sleeps nor slumber. But if I meditate on his word day and night, it gives me comfort and assurance. And the people, the children of Israel, and those in the Bible, they begin to meditate on God's character. What's got to happen is in our study, I hope and I pray in the study, you start to think about what we just talked about. Did pastor say the God we serve is I am? Did pastor just say he's outside of everything? Did pastor just tell me that nothing can change God? Did pastor just tell me that God will not lie? Did pastor just say that nothing calls God, but God calls everything? Did pastor just remind us that God didn't need nothing to exist and he has no needs and he don't have nothing that makes him, he don't need nothing necessary for him to do anything. Did, did pastor just reveal that to me? If I meditate on God's word, then night what happens, it heightens, Sister Laverne, here it is, Sister, Sister Esther, it heightens my comfort and it heightens my assurance. And when I start meditating on the word of God day and night, then I can tell you, Dignus Bar, no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. When I start to meditate, see, here's the thing. If I started talking on earthly things, it's going to be limited. And you're going to say, well, now, how you know God's going to work it out? Because you're going off earthly things. But if I meditate on the word day and night, I am comfort and I am assured by the God that I'm serving. And if I meditate on God's character, it lets me know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy it comes in the morning because I know the character and I know the nature of God. Good God Almighty. Pastor, go ahead and preach. It's wisdom, but still preach. If I meditate on God's character, it gives me the comfort and assurance that if I go to bed at night, I'm going to wake up in his arms. If I go to bed at night and he take my life, I'm going to wake up in his face. But if I meditate on the comfort, if I meditate on the character of God, it assures me. It assures me this is why we study so that we can keep in assurance of who God Jesus said he's coming and if I meditate on the word day and night then it assures me that he's coming back for his bride good God almighty I'm excited I'm excited because I meditate and every Wednesday and every Sunday and all my personal devotion and if I'm listening to it on the radio and if I got it on the CD and if I'm playing on the tape if I'm reading on a piece of paper if I wrote a scripture on a napkin I got to meditate on it day and night so it can give me comfort and I may be in the sick bed. I may be in a hospital. I may be in an accident. I may be in a bad situation, but my job is to meditate on God's character because I know he's going to bring me out. I know he's going to bring me out. And I may have had a dream in the beginning and they may throw me in the pit in the middle, but I know what God told me based on his character. And I know what I know, what I know. Anybody here know that they know that they know. And I don't know everything, but one thing I do know is that I'm a child of God. I do know that. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I do know that. So every day I wake up, I make sure I don't meditate just on the earthly things. Yeah, I watch the news. Yeah, I watch the weather. But I don't meditate on that day and night. But what I do meditate on is the character of God. Because if I know he loves me, if I meditate on his wrath, if I meditate on his blessings, if I meditate on his love, it'll keep me comfort and makes me assured. Go ahead, Pastor, teach it. Go ahead, Pastor. Uh, just let it all hang out. Uh, I, I meditate on it. I just keep reminding myself. In the worst situation, remind yourself. You do know God can come get you whenever he wants. Remind yourself. And this is what happened in, in, in the Bible. What happened is uh, the children of Israel and the people of God, uh, even in the New Testament, there were many that would meditate on his character. And it brought them comfort. So I went to Thessalonia, the Thessalonians uh, in Thessalonica, uh, we asked Paul, when is he coming back? Paul said, when the trump sound. Just hold on. And if you get to the point where you are a little troubled or you're feeling a little shaky in your face, go back and read. And then walk yourself back up to where you are now and tell me, do you have faith now? Because if he can come in the midst of a fiery furnace, surely. He can handle our situation. Anybody write that key down? 
I know I said a lot. That's probably why you got to just do your own recording on this. Knowing God involves more than just awareness, more than just information, more than just a religious experience. To know him is to enter relationship with him so that who he is influences who you are. Who he is influences who you are. One tragedy to witness is to see one go to church and be made aware of God to go and get information about him. And if the praise team is good, a feeling, but still leave church with God never having an influence on you and your living. That's a tragedy that you walked in the presence of God and walked out the same way. That's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. That's a major accident. When you walk into the presence of God and you walk out the same way, that's a tragedy. So when we come back next Wednesday, here's the first excellency that pertains to the Godhead as God, the decree of God. The first thing we wanna look at, one of the attributes Characteristic qualities of God is the decree of God, his decrees. And let me define it for you. The decrees of God are declarations or pronouncements that he has made in working out his plan or his plan, I'm sorry, in various ages. It can also be defined as that just, wise, and holy purpose or plan by which eternally and within himself he determines all things whatsoever that come to pass. Oh, this is going to be powerful when we come back. All we're going to talk about next Wednesday is the decree of God. That's the one thing. It's 20 or 30 other things we're going to talk about. But next Wednesday, we're just going to talk about the decree of God. What does that mean? Well, let's, let's end with this. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9 and 10. Um, do you mind? Isaiah Isaiah 46, verse 9 and 10 deep. Amen. Isaiah 46, 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So next week, the decrees of God. When God decree a thing, and nothing, nothing can change it. That's all we're going to talk about. The decree of God. That's one of his excellencies. When God makes a decree. Now, when we start going over these, it's going to be the holy, holy, holiness of God. It's going to be the love of God, the favor of God, the blessing of God, the wrath of God. God, omniscient. I'm not present. We're going to look at everything. The, the curses of God. When you begin to meditate on those things, you will be in awe on Sunday morning. You you will look around, digging elbow to say, "Should I be here? Should, should I be in here?" Yeah, yeah, you can come. You'll come. You're a child of God. You sure? You sure? Because I can't believe the God that I am learning about will love me the way He's loving me. So what are you going to do? I'm going to praise him and I'm going to thank him because I've learned so much about him. Now, I, I, I know you like me. If you are, uh, Sister Laverne and Sister Mary, I, I was studying this and I said, Lord, why couldn't somebody tell me this when I was 12 years old? My goodness, I would have been a bad preacher at 16. But I thank God I am learning at whatever age I am. And it should be like that. When you begin to understand who God is, it makes you want to go back in time and say, you know what? I, man, I ain't hanging out with y'all. I ain't doing this. I'm going to study God. I'm going to study his word. Because now I'm seeing how valuable it is and how it makes my life valuable 
when I know who he is. So I say this to the younger ones, you know, I'm 54. Uh, so 54 is the new 45, according to, you know, I, I told somebody I, I, I'm following Prince. Prince stopped at a certain age. So I just declared I'm going to stop at 54. That's it. No, So don't ask me no more. In July, how old I'm returning? It's going to be 54. It's going to stay 54 to I'm 94. How's that? Uh, uh, but, but, but to the younger ones, this is why I says grow them up in the admonition of the Lord. They going they may fight it, but you want them to know who God is. It changes the lives. Once you know, see, when you know about somebody, see, here, here's the thing. Here's, here's the thing. It, I, I, I listen. I invite men to try to woo first lady, so Kenny. I, I try. I, I invite them. You, you can do, go ahead. Get, give it your best shot. You can try to woo first lady all you want. Give it your best shot uh, because I know her. I know what moves her. Are, are you with me here? Uh, and, and so, and, and so, I'm 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 comfortable because every day I'm learning more. Are y'all with me here? Uh, that's just the natural thing. So, so every day I meditate on God's word, so I know when the enemy's talking through the flesh of others, or even through my flesh, and when God is speaking. And one thing I know, He, he don't speak all the time. This is what I said to First Lady. I said, I think I said to the trusty spirits when I was talking to her. I said, have you noticed God ain't say a word to Abraham until he raised that knife on his son? You remember that, Deacon Nevels? You remember that? He ain't say a word to him. Now, now Abraham may say, yeah, God will make a right. God told him to make a left. You can say whatever you want to say, but, but God ain't speak until you raise that knife. So that doesn't mean God talks all the time, but you can meditate on who he is all the time. So when he do talk, you'll know that's from God. But if you're dwelling and meditating on earthly things, you will think God sound like this. And that's not God. That's you. Somebody say, that's you. Because his, his word is backed up by his word. His word is backed up by his word. Amen. Anybody learn anything tonight? Amen. Amen. This is going to be an exciting study. Um, it, it, it's going to be exciting study. I'm always getting excited. So you, you can't go off me. I stay excited, you know. Uh, but the study is going to be exciting to know because we're just going to look at the different natures and the character of God. It's just going to just blow us away. Oh, my God. Look at this. It's just going to blow us away. But it should take us to another level in him. tonight. You should have the best sleep. Well, Pastor, you don't know. My knees are hurting. My, I understand that, you know, rub them with something, you know, but but you should have the best sleep because of who you are and who he is. And it doesn't matter if it's raining hard outside, it doesn't matter if it's snow, if it snows eight inches, it doesn't matter. It's who he is and who you are now in him. You are, we are children of the most high god and there's nothing that's coming behind him it's not that god gonna finish and something come no 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 you gonna finish god's gonna always be who he is any comments before we before we close yeah daddy and uh, before you let us go um, i stumble um, on this scripture that says philippians 3 14 says I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Yep. So in other words, it, it, it just really touches me. I said, okay, before you let us go, you know, I look into this word, I use the word, I said, press on. In other words, um, the writer already know that there will be resistance. You know, that's why he encouraged you to press on. And uh, our fight is spiritual, not carnal. Uh, if we are in the church fighting, you know, we are fighting spiritual more. And we all want to stay spiritual. Uh, Daddy is not going to let me lose my grace and hear the word Bible church because he wasn't here when I make decision to worship with Bible, uh, hear the word Bible church. Mm -hmm. My question is why God allow me 
to come here what exactly god want to use me what exactly he want me to see so we have to understand that this is not all about any person it's not all about first lady it's not all about the ministers it's not all about the deacons but it's all about Come you on, why you are here in the world here the world bible church My what god. god want you to do in here the world bible church glory so to god i don't know why he said press on in other words everything Jesus. you go through don't look at everybody's character. Look at God. Ooh, Lord. See why you are in here the word Bible church. Hallelujah. You leave this church, I bet you, you are going to go there Make and it. meet the same people again. So the problem is you got to understand why God put you where you are. God bless you. Amen. Glory that's, a, to God. that's a good point. That's a good, that's a good point. The more I press on, the greater my relationship will be, the more I will know about him, the less tripping and falling I would do. And this is why the, I, I know the Lord laid this study on our, uh, on our plate to eat. Um, and it's going to get real heavy because when I know about him, you can't, one, one thing you can't tell me, you know, they said, uh, uh, you can't make me doubt him. Remember that Mother Harris, uh, Mother Jaquette? I know too much about him. <laughs> you can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. When you know that you know that you know, nothing can change that. You got that, Sister S. You got that, Sister Charlene. You got that, Sister Jasmine. You got that, Dignus McCarr. You got that, Sister Kenny. You got that, Sister Mary. You got that, Dignus Jaquet. Nothing can hey, separate man. you from hey, the love man. of God. Because he's a God of love. That's his nature. And you can pull away. We went through that with Jose and Goma. This is why you have to be at the right table. Because uh, the right chef would know exactly what meal comes after the, the, the next meal. <laughs> Are you with me, kid? Uh, the wrong yes, chef would try to give you dessert when you haven't had your entree yet. But the right chef will prepare the right food for us. My here. God. Gracious God, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for so much that was revealed, even in the introduction of your nature and your character. And we thank you so much for giving us the intelligence and the mind and the will to want to know more about you. Thank you, because you don't have to do it. You don't need us, but you love us. And we thank you that you loved us and you revealed it more and more who you are to us. And Lord, as we study, open our eyes and overwhelm us so that we will holler our cup overflow. Let our cup overflow from the joy of knowing who you are. And then you send your son. Lord, we're not going to be able to handle this. We already know it. But we thank you for who you are. It's in Jesus name we pray. Let everyone say amen. Maximize your amen. evening. Maximize your evening. Lord's willing, if he wills it to be, we'll be there on Sunday in the building. Amen. Giving God praise. God bless you all.